Given an integer array nums, move all of the zeros to the end of it while maintaining the relative order of the non-zero elements. Hi everyone, we're here today with Simon for another software engineering mock interview. Thanks so much for being here with us today, Simon. Can you quickly introduce yourself? Yeah. Uh, hi, folks. Uh, I'm Simon Eisman, and I'm a software engineer at Google. Uh, in the past, I've also built systems at Spotify and Bloomberg and interned at Etsy and Foursquare, and excited to be back for another mock. Awesome. Yeah, I imagine you've had to do a lot of interviews then, so I'm excited to see you use some of that experience here today. Um, all right, so let's get right into our question for today. Given an integer array nums, move all of the zeros to the end of it while maintaining the relative order of the non-zero elements. And before we get started, be sure to click the link in the description to check out Exponent Software Engineering Interview Course. Ace your interview with library of interview questions, in-depth mock interviews on coding and system design, and a peer-to-peer -peer mock interview tool to practice yourself. Uh, so I see here that we have an example input and its expected mm -hmm. output. We've sort of moved all the zeros to the end here. Yep. Um, I guess I have a few questions. Uh, can I use extra space for this problem? As in, can I return a new array for the solution? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, we would prefer if you could do this in place. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. Uh, I think, you know, if we could use extra space, my, my high level thought here is that maybe we could go through the array and then fill our result array with the non zero integers first, you know, in order. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and then we can just fill the rest with zeros until we kind of match the sizes. But yeah, um, I, I hear you. Right. That sounds like a pretty good solution. But unfortunately, we've got to assume we don't have that extra storage. Sure. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so another question I had, uh, will the array have duplicate values? Uh, yeah, you can assume it might have duplicate values. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't think it should affect the ultimate algorithm, but I think it's, you know, good to keep in mind potentially for examples or something like that, test cases. Mm -hmm. um, so overall, I think that one approach that could work is, you know, we go through the array that we're given, um, you know, remove all the zeros as we go and then just add them back at the end. I think that could potentially work. Um, okay, sure. So what would the time complexity of that approach be? Yeah, I think that's ultimately the problem, you know, removing an element from an array as an O of N operation, uh, mm -hmm. it requires shifting over the remaining elements to fill the gap. So in the worst case for the overall algorithm, we would potentially be removing something about like N elements. So I guess that would be O of N squared overall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm wondering if you can do better here. Yeah, yeah, we definitely can. Um, I guess this idea is a little bit out there, but I suppose we could sort the array, um, which would technically be faster than quadratic time. It would be O of n log n. Um, the only thing here is that we'd probably just need a custom comparator for the sorting, mm -hmm. uh, something like you know zeros are weighted as infinity or something like that, so they get pushed to the end, uh, and all non-zeros are kind of I guess, weighted the same. Um, I think Python, which I'm going to use, I think it also guarantees stable ordering for its sorting. So, and that's necessary for our problem, but I think something mm -hmm. like that could work too. Right. Yeah. That's a good thing to mention that the stable ordering matters here in order to keep the non-zero elements in the same order. Right. So um, that sounds like it would work. Actually, it's not so far out there. Uh, what are some of the downsides of this approach? Yeah, I mean, I suppose that one down, downside here is that it's kind of like a cute solution uh, to this, you know, very particular problem. Uh, it's, it's not a very extensible solution if, say, you know, the problem parameters were to change. Uh, but I think that a bigger downside is that it actually might still be too inefficient. My, my gut says that there's probably like a linear, you know, O of N solution here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what might that look like? Yeah, I was thinking that one common pattern I could try applying here is something like a two pointer approach. Mm -hmm. uh, so ultimately we wanna move all the zeros over to the end, uh, or I guess perhaps a better way of thinking about it is, you know, we wanna move all the non zeros to the front of the array. Mm -hmm. um, so I suppose that we could, so we could iterate over the array while 
also keeping track of where to put that sort of next non-zero value, uh, you know, the earliest position that needs to be filled. Um, I think that would ultimately end up being O of N time. I do need to try it against an example though, because I'm, I'm not fully sure how many pieces of data to keep track of and, you know, if I'll actually get all the zeros at the end. So, so let's maybe, uh, try it against an example. Okay. Yeah. Cause uh, I was just about to ask where the pointers are pointing. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, so let's start with maybe a longer example than this one. Let me just kind of try an example where we have zeros kind of everywhere. Um, mm -hmm. so let's do zero, four, let's say another zero, two, three, let's add another zero for measure one zero. Okay. Um, so if I have this input, well, ultimately want to get is four, two, three, one, and then four, four zeros. Yeah. I think that makes sense. Um, okay. So, so let's, let's start kind of keeping track of our data. So if we have something like this, let's sort of set ourselves up with a, you know, left and right pointer and then kind of see where that takes us. So if we want to start shifting all of the non-zero elements to the left, we'll, we'll start here. Um, you know, what's the ultimate rule that we're looking for? Um, if the value that we're at is not a zero, we kind of have to shift it to the last existing position. So this is a zero, so we kind of do nothing. So let's say for argument's sake, you know, and this iteration, our right pointer moves forward. Uh, then we check what's happening at the right pointer. This is a non-zero, so we fill that left pointer with whatever's at the right pointer. So that four gets put over there. Okay, okay so that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, so just then, to make sure I'm understanding what you're doing. So the left pointer is yeah. always going to point to where you want to store all the non, the, the end of where you're storing all the non-zero elements, and the right pointer just points to where you're currently iterating through the array. Yeah, exactly. Like we're sort of okay. moving that right pointer forward one at a time. And then the left pointer should technically only shift when we're moving something there. Um, so like in this case, we took what was at the zero, th the first index, and we moved it to what was in the first index, the zeroth index. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. Right. So, so at this stage, you know, we move forward the right pointer like we did. Uh, we also have to move the, the left pointer actually. So these both shift forward. Um, we check what's here. It's a zero. So we keep iterating forward. We check what's here. It's a two. So we want to put that where the left pointer is. So that becomes a two. Um, then we shift both of them uh, because we just filled in uh, what was at that left pointer. Again, we have a non-zero value, so this becomes a three. So these both shift. Um, this is a zero, so we keep going forward. Uh, at this point, we have a one, so we fill that. We have over here a zero, so we don't fill that. And then I guess the right pointer goes beyond the limit of the array, so we're kind of done. Um, mm -hmm. We're not technically done, because I see now, and this is kind of what was on my mind, that we still need to fill the zeros at the end. So mm -hmm. I guess one last step after we do that iteration is we just kind of continue that left pointer forward, filling in zeros as we go. And I think that that would give us this expected output. Okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me. And so can you reiterate to me what the space-time complexity and time complexity of this is? Yeah, uh, so the, the space complexity is constant. Uh, we're mm -hmm. only using you know a couple of extra variables to keep track of information, and we're using the mm -hmm. uh, input array that's given to us. And the time complexity here is linear. It's O of N. We do okay, technically perfect. do like two passes, kind of, um, but it's <laughs> you know O of N at the end of the day. Right. Okay. Yeah. So that's a lot better than the couple of other approaches you initially proposed. So. Why don't we try implementing it? Yeah, sounds great. Uh, so let's cover this up. Um, let's start defining ourselves uh, a function. Um, let's call it, you know, move, move zeros. Um, take data. 
All right, so we, we need to start keeping track of multiple pointers. So um, let's call it something like index or something like that. Start it off at zero, and then we iterate over each of the numbers in that array. Uh, actually, let's call this let's call this fill index just to make it a little clearer. I don't think we actually need the index when we're iterating over this array, but yeah, let's see. Um, so what was our rule? Our rule was that uh, if the number that we're at is not zero, we put it to where we're keeping track of our data. So, um, so if the number does not equal zero, then we do something like data at fill index uh, equals the number that we have. Um, so this kind of pushes it forward. Um, the only last thing that's missing here is if we do that, we have to shift that array index forward. So fill index plus equals one. All right, awesome. Um, so I think that does the first half of what I was talking about was that it shifts all the elements in here first. Uh, now we just need to do that last part, which is filling the zeros at the end. Uh, so let's say for remaining index uh, in range. So we're, we're already where we need to be, right? Like if we kind of look at this initial example that we had, the, the left mm -hmm. index that we wanted is kind of our starting point. So let's actually do exactly that. Let's say fill index over here. Uh, rather than starting from scratch, uh, up until the end of the array. And what do we do in that case? We just fill it with a zero. Um, so yeah, I think this should work. And you know, just to comment it, you know, we fill the first partition, and then for the second part, um, fill remainder with zeros. Okay. With yeah, um, we should probably right. test this now. Yeah, I think that's important. What kind of test cases do you have in mind? Yeah, I mean, we, we definitely want to test edge cases, uh, mm -hmm. you know, arrays with, you know, only zeros, um, maybe, maybe no zeros, uh, situations where we have duplicate numbers, perhaps. Um, I think that that would, that would make sense. Uh, more general case, like zeros at the beginning, zeros only at the end. And, and I guess the general scenario where we kind of have zeros well spread out, like in, like in this case. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Um, shall we write some unit tests? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Awesome. So if we do this, we'll have move zeros of, let's say, uh, let, let's try that initial example that we have. So 0, 8, 8, 0, 6, 1. So this could be, let, just for argument's sake, let's make sure that we have that work. Then we could try it with a couple of other examples. So let's say um, zeros at the beginning, let's say zeros at the end, uh, all zeros no zeros. So let's try something like that. So zeros at the beginning, something like this. Zeros at the end, uh, only zeros, and then only numbers, something like this. And let's say for argument's sake, just our long example that we had here, because, you know, we love and cherish the examples that we started with. So. Okay, let's try that. All right, great. Uh, so yeah. what we instead have to do is we have to take our data and then uh, uh, modify it in place. So this is kind of an expected result. Uh, so let's say data equals this. Uh, and then we just do data and then print data at the end. So this and then print. So a bunch of these. No. If, 
if this were a real unit testing framework, this would be much nicer, but yeah. yeah. Like this. And then one more for that last one. All right, let's try that again. All right, move to the end, move to the end, move to the end. Great, yeah, this looks like uh, what we expect. So Okay, perfect. Uh, so I think this is a great place to pause. Uh, you really did a great job with this interview, uh, but I'd still love to hear from you. If you were the interviewer, how would you analyze this? Like, uh, what do you think went well and what do you think you would improve? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I think what was good about the interview is that, you know, we took a structured approach to solving it where, as always, you want to ask clarifying questions and kind of build up to a solution. Um, I think one thing that I could have done better when I was doing that is uh, maybe be explicit when an approach that I'm suggesting is, you know, brute force, uh, like being more explicit with the interviewer about that, uh, you know, backing it up with some sort of time or space complexity analysis uh, preemptively, uh, and perhaps mm -hmm. suggesting that we could do better than that. I think that's always a good signal to the interviewer. Mm -hmm. I just sort of posited a solution, but, uh, you kind of prompted me back that maybe it wasn't as efficient. Um, another thing that I think, uh, could have been, uh, a good hint in this thing, or not a good hint, but a good, uh, application here is that I tried a proposed approach against an example. I wasn't sure if it would work. Uh, and I think that that's always a good step to take before you jump into the code. You want to try it against an example to ensure its correctness. Uh, and hopefully, as it did in this case, it kind of set ourselves, set ourselves up with uh, a good unit test case to do later. Mm -hmm. um, one more thing uh, we can realize in retrospect is that we actually could have optimized this code a little bit. Uh, we don't technically need to fill in uh, at the end here with zeros. Uh, we could technically just swap elements as we go, uh, which would actually just automatically push the zeros to the end uh, anyway. Uh, right. We sort of realized at the end that we, we were kind of left with numbers that we didn't need. But uh, uh, in reality, if we did some swapping, this would have yielded us our solution at the very end. So we don't need to do this extra um, set of steps. Right. Yeah, that's a clever observation. So still linear, but definitely a little bit more efficient. Um, yeah, okay, so I agree with a lot of those points. I do really like that you uh, tested your logic on a lot of like concrete toy examples and it helps your thinking process and it also helps the interviewer understand how you're thinking about the problem. So I found that really helpful. Uh, and I like that your code was like very efficient and clear. You didn't really start implementing until you were clear on what your algorithm was. Um, yeah, and I also like that you thought carefully about all of the different test cases that you wanted to try. So, like, you came up with a really exhaustive set. There weren't really any other test cases that I could even suggest because you'd already covered so many of them. So that was amazing as well. Um, yeah, and I think that's about all. Um, again, also really like the clarifying questions because I, when I posed the question, it was a little bit vague. I hadn't mentioned, for example, that uh, it needed to be in place or that you have to maintain the relative order of the non-zero elements. So it was really smart that you asked those questions as well. All right, so uh, thank you so much for being here with us today, Simon. Uh, and thanks everybody else for watching. If you have any upcoming interviews, good luck. Bye everyone. Mm -hmm.